Now in this series, we're gonna be building a photo studio specifically for creating material presets. And it's gonna be really important that we have a good neutral view of what each of those presets looks like in its thumbnail and also so that when we look at the, when we're designing our presets we know that we have really nice even balanced lighting applied to them and a good way of doing that is to use what is called a color checker or a color card and uh, these are made uh, famously by Greta Macbeth or x right color now and these things are really really helpful in making sure that your photographic images are perfectly balanced across all different color ranges. Down here you have analytical colors like red, green, blue, also uh, yellow, magenta, and cyan, as in CMYK. You have black all the way fading up to white. You have some uh, natural colors up here on the top, and you have some kind of in-between, uh, I guess, uh, secondary colors here in the middle. And these are, these are commonly used in Photoshop for color correction, but we can also use them here in Modo to make sure that our lighting setup is really good and balanced before we get going. So let's actually close this up. And what I have is just an assembly called my color checker, G22. And this is color checker G22 because it's gamma 2.2. I have a color checker for gamma 1.0 in case I'm working in a linear gamma workflow, but that is a whole other topic that we don't need to cover uh, in this series, trust me. Let's just stick with gamma 2.2. And if I double click on this assembly, it drops in my color card, and I happen to have all of these different colors applied to it. So, um, and those colors actually are gamma 2.2 corrected. So if we go to our shader tree and expand this, I have my, there's the, the imported material. Underneath that, I have my color checker material, which is a completely zeroed out material, except for the diffuse amount, which is 100%. Because again, this is analytical uh, purposes here. We want to make sure we're getting back all of the energy we put in, in terms of light, just so that we have a nice, clean indicator of what's going in. And then we have all of these individual colors. And for each one of them, I've applied say uh, bluish green and this is just a diffuse color channel it's not affecting any other channel of the material just the color so let's go through how I would put together something like this I'm not going to demonstrate the entire process because frankly it is really really tedious and so let's just look at how I did it and then you can use my uh, my preset here to save you a whole bunch of really painful work so let's do it let's create a unit cube out here in space and I need this to be a bunch smaller so I'm gonna to go to my model tab I'm gonna to go to polygon selection mode or any component selection mode that is I'll go to my snaps and precision tools and down at the very very bottom I'm gonna use the absolute scaling tool I want you to note it's not scale absolute it's not size absolute it is absolute scaling which is quite confusing I'm well aware and then under explicit scaling, let's set this X value to 100 millimeters, the Y value to 100 millimeters times six, uh, 9 over 16, so it's just a good aspect ratio for us. And then the Z, we'll set that to 2 millimeters. And then I click explicit scale. That's just going to scale this down to the size of the card that we want. And I'm using a 100 millimeter card because my default sphere is 100 millimeters and I just feel like that makes sense. So now I'm going to select a couple of polygons to define a loop, right? Then Alt C for loop slice, click in the viewport, and I want three loops evenly spaced. So the mode is going to be uniform and then my count is set to three. Hit the escape key to drop the tool, select a couple of these guys vertically, Alt C, click in the viewport, once again, mode uniform. This time I want to count a five because I want six total squares across. Spacebar to drop the tool. I'll grab all of these front face polys. B for bevel, click in the viewport, being careful not to move anything. Let's set that shift back to zero for a second. Now I want to shift these inward by a certain amount, or I should say inset these inward. I'm going to say by 1.5 millimeters. And then I'm going to shift click in the viewport. Just shift and click to reactivate that tool from scratch and then shift these back by one millimeter. Hit the space bar to drop the tool and now we have a completed model of our card. Now let's hit the number five on the keypad to go to item selection mode. Right click this item and create an item mask and I'll rename this color 
card. I'll grab my material here. I'm going to set its diffuse amount to 100%, but I'm going to set the diffuse color all the way to black. Set my specular uh, amount to zero, so this is a completely flat blank material. And now we need to go through and assign a whole bunch of material assignments to this, and this is where things get tedious. So I'm just going to do one of them, and then you can do all the others if you want. So let's start uh, at the top left corner, which is this brown one that they actually call dark skin. So let's go back here. I'm going to select the top left one, hit M for material. I'll call this dark skin. Hit OK. And then here's what needs to happen. I'm going to delete the default material that comes in the dark skin folder. Okay, and take that dark skin folder and drag it into my color card folder. And then I'll add a layer, processing, constant. Now I'm going to recommend renaming that constant just to make it a little bit easier to know what it is. We'll call it dark skin color. And then I'm going to expand that and delete the default texture locator because there's no locator necessary for this. We just need the color itself. Next we need to set the actual color of this. So we could go back here, we'll select the hex value for our color, copy it, come in here to our color area, we'll just paste that in, hit enter, and that should give us our color. And now we can see that out here in our viewport. Unfortunately though, as we've established, this is not a gamma corrected color. This is a gamma, uh, well, this is going to come out too light, right? It's gamma 1.0, so when it comes out, it's going to be too bright. We're going to have to fix that gamma. So let's go over to Photoshop, and let's grab our color picker. We'll paste in the color that we want to get, fill it in here, image, adjustments, and we'll do a, uh, an exposure. And we'll set that gamma correction to 0.45. I'm going to select that color. We'll grab that hex value and go back to Moto and set this guy to the actual corrected color. And that's going to give us the correct result when we render this. It looks too dark now, but when we render it, it's going to look right. Now, to speed up this process, if you want to do this fast, obviously there are a ton of these, and if I did everything I just did that many times, it would take hours to do this. Um, what we can do, actually, to speed it up slightly is just zoom out here on my web page so I have uh, less to see on my screen and just make it a little bit bigger. All right, and then I would use my snipping tool or whatever screen grab utility you're using to get all of these colors at once, copy them, don't save it, we'll head over to Photoshop, make a new document, paste those in, image, adjustments, uh, exposure, 0.45. Now you've got all these swatches here ready to use. You just grab a swatch and then you can really quickly grab the new hex code. So you might take this one for example, M for material. This one is light skin and delete the default material out of it. Put that in our group. We'll grab this one, uh, this, uh, sorry. We'll grab this constant, right click, duplicate, drag it up here. We'll rename this light skin color. And then you would go back to Photoshop. You grab the light skin color, the adjusted one, copy the hex value, back to Moto, paste that in, and now we have it. Now, clearly, this is very laborious, and what I can do is actually use scripting and different things to really hurry this up along, but uh, that's going to be way beyond what we can cover in a video. So this is the basic process, though, for how you would set something like this up. I would then add all of this stuff to an assembly, and in the end, what I end up with is my color checker with all those colors in it ready to use. So let's talk about how we make use of it.